Hello, this is Gata7, and today I'm going to show you path editing for Super Mario 64 DS. Now, as usual, you're going to need the best editor by Jupa Hay provided in the description. You're also going to need your Super Mario 64 ROM, otherwise, you have nothing to edit, and yeah, that's about it. So, we're going to open the editor, then, we're going to open our ROM. So, we're going to open paths. Now, for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to go to Cool Cool Mountain. Alright, now if you have a bunch of unimportant paths, I recommend you go into paths and hit remove all. But we uh, don't really have any paths at the moment, so I'm going to click add path. And so now you can see that I create a path but we have no idea where it is whatsoever. In order to get to it we can just double click an object to figure out where it is and here it is. So we're just going to move this path right where we want it. Now if we're using paths we must have an object that we want to control with paths. So I'm just going to go and find one right now. So I'm going to go into objects, add object. I'm going to add a moving path controlled lift. Now these are also controlled by paths, but I, right now I'm going to use the floating one because that makes more sense. This is the one used in versus mode. There's one used for the lethal lava land, although I don't know its name at the moment. So we're just going to use this one. Now I'm going to set this right in the middle here and right in the middle where I have it I'm going to make it have the same dimensions of this the same Z of this so I'm going to copy this and yeah now I'm going to copy the coordinates of this and I'm going to edit this path node and paste the coordinates so that way we have the ship here or platform right that has a path node right in the middle here so this is going to be our starting path node path node 0 will be the starting path node now I'm going to click add a path node and that will just add a path node right next to it although we need to separate it so we're going, we can just scroll one of these values and then pick it up then I'm going to, for this tutorial, I want to have it go in a rectangle, meaning I'm going to have it go here, 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 and then here. And then it'll go in a constant loop. So I'm going to fix this path because I don't want it to be odd. So I'm going to click this warp Z position since it's just kind of a placeholder for this then I can just paste that in then the X value should be the same of this Oof, I didn't know what I did there luckily I can just copy these coordinates and then paste it in again now I can go copy this Z value or X sorry then I can paste it there then I'm also going to paste place the Y because I don't want the path to go up. I want it to stay with the same dimensions. And then there we go. We add a path there. Then it's kind of the same concept here, except I didn't really want to add this path. So I'm going to remove that path. So you can always hit the remove object if you want to remove the currently selected object. And then I'm just going to keep on adding path nodes. And I'll be right back. I should, I should also mention that if you're making a new path node, you can just modify one of these values. And if you want, just make it exact, then you can do the final touches. So I'm going to copy that X 
and it looks like they're same. Okay, so how do we see how this path will look like? We're going to click the path 0, and it will show how the path looks, but we have a problem here. Once the platform reaches this path, it's just going to fall off. And we don't want it to fall off. We didn't want it to go in circles. So what we're going to do is look through these parameters and, oh, FF means closed. Okay, so we're just going to click this path again. And you can see we have a closed, completed path. That's nice and neat. Now let's go into the object descriptions of this guy here. and you can see the object parameters here. So let's look through them. Um, A, path appears as dots. Sure, we want that, so we're going to memorize the one. Okay, we want it to start when you stand on it, so we're also going to memorize the one here. We don't know what this does, so we want to have zero. And our path ID, if we go back, it's zero. So yeah, it's path zero. So our parameters for parameter one are going to be one one zero zero. So let's go into the raw editor. This is parameter one, parameter two, and parameter three. So let's go here. One, one, zero, zero. Then we can hit save. Just to show you that the paths will work, I'm going to go back in the editor. And nothing should have been changed. The paths have been updated so that they actually work now, which is good. Because before they would go crazy, as you may have saw in one of my other videos. So now let's go and test how it looks in-game. Alright, now in-game, you can see the lift here. So let me try and get up for that. You can see that it goes on exactly when I start, just like I told it to. And you can see that it behaves very well, and that it follows all the paths exactly like it should. It worked. Let's go back in here, and we're going to edit something harder, which are the rolling ball things. I don't want anything bad to happen, so I'm just going to place this rolling ball here. Does it give anything that will tell us the parameters? No. We'll have to figure out those later. But at the moment we're just going to worry about paths. So I'm going to make a new path. Even though we already have a path, we can hit add path. So now we have this kind of thing here. So I'm going to copy the coordinates of this again just paste those right there. So now we kind of have that path node. I'm just going to make it go up just in case. Iron balls will never just kind of float. They all they go down. And we need to add another path node to tell us where to go. We don't need to be as exact as the last one. Add path node. Okay, there we go. Maybe it just didn't know what to do at the moment. So I'm going to edit and place the next path node down here, which makes sense. Now, of course, if you already know what you're doing, you can probably just not watch the rest of this or just kind of skip ahead. But I'm just going to place all these path nodes along down this mountain. So I'll be right back. All right, I'm done placing the path nodes. Now let me go zoom out and select the path. Now you can see how the iron ball will roll down this hill, go down this path mountain thing, and then after that commit suicide by going into the wall. If a path, if a rolling ball hits the wall, it will just shatter. So hopefully everything will go well while this rolling ball path has been placed. And I'm going to go check the parameters of this thing somewhere so we can get that to work. So I'll be back.
All right, in Baobam's battlefield, we have path one, and we also have a rolling ball that follows path one. And so I'm just going to set the parameters of the path to be the same, just as a precaution to make sure that everything is going to be good. So I have everything set like it does in Bob Battlefield, FF, FF, 7F. Okay, now let's look at the object parameters itself. I don't know what this does or what these things do, but since it follows path ID 1, it's only fair to assume that this guy here is the path ID. And luckily we're using path 1 here as well, so we can use 0, 1, 2, 0 just like it does. So let's go into the object editor. I'm just going to the editor. I'm just going to set this to 0, 1, 2, 0. Then let's see if this all works in game. And you can see that iron balls start spawning and follow our path. So let's follow them to the end here. We can keep up. Oh, and they appear to just bounce off. Ah, oh, strange. You can see them go into the war and crash. So you can see that they decided not to die and just decided to bounce off the wall. But that just takes a little bit of experimenting to really get, I suppose. Now, now, so you just have to kind of play around with the balls just to make sure that they work correctly. And that's it. Paths is just a bit of experimenting, and if you get it all right, then you'll work. Although you're not seeing them spawn here, because apparently if the rolling balls will only spawn if you are so close. So you may also need to troubleshoot that. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll see you all later.